Hey y'all, time for another Did You Know? If you're using the X tool, you may have figured out by now that it is a okay machine. It has a lot of limitations, one of which is the, and the lack of limit switches and a being able to return to a exact home position every time. It, you, without those limit switches, it slams into the side rail, bounces around a little bit, and then bounces off the back rail. And that makes it challenging if you're wanting to uh, <clears throat> resend the job out. Because if you don't start from the exact same position every time, you're not going to have a an exact um, reburn if you have to send a job back out. So this is my tip for getting around that problem. And I'm gonna show you, I've talked about it before, but now I'm gonna show you in this one, how to set up your X and Y return positions and how to start from that position so you can send out a job uh, multiple times without too much worry. So let's jump in here to Lightburn. So this is a project that I've got out that I'm getting ready to do, and it's going to be uh, a large burn on one of the natural wood planks. Uh, I've got her framed at what 13 by seven and a half, and this is a burn that's going to take us uh, an hour and 50 minutes to do the burn. And I'm going to try a technique with the front grill here, by playing with the line intervals to try and create a grill type pattern, you know, uh, so that it's not just a solid burn in. And in case that doesn't work, I want to be able to send this laser back out to touch up, feel, or burn away whatever needs to be done. So in order to do that, I need to have the laser start from a known position, not a kind of sort of home position, and then when this job is finished, it goes back to that same point. And that way, if I need to send it back out, I can send it out from that known position. You follow me? Uh, so this is what I do. I go into my gears, which is my, uh, is that the right place? Gears? Maybe it ain't gears. That settings go to the wrenches. There we go. Go to your wrench and screwdriver, your device settings. And right down here, you have a return to finish position. And a lot of you are probably not even gonna have that turned on. So you need to turn that on and then set your values here of whatever you want your return position to be. Now I've talked about this in a, so some previous uh, videos where if you're doing, if you like if you're working with a template, and that template is burning something down here in the lower right quadrant repeatedly. When it's done, you don't want that laser to have to jog all the way back up here to X and Y. So you can find your known X and Y position that will be clear of your area that will allow you to assign that to your return position. So when it finishes the job, it'll come up here and park. Now you can clear your material, put it back down, Send it out again and to come out and reburn in that same place. Well, in this instance, I'm not using any kind of template and I'm not planning on having to go back out. But in case I do have to go back out, I want to go out and be able to know that I can be in going to the same position. So to do that on all of my jobs, I have my X and Y home position or return to finish position. It's not my home position. Return to finish position is X10 and Y10. You set that up in your device settings, which is that gear or that wrench and screwdriver. So return to finish position, turn it on and assign it X and 10 and tell it OK. On that, that is exactly what it says. It's the return to finish position. That has nothing to do with your start position. 
So what I do, this is a fresh burn. I've not done anything yet. I've just turned my laser on. In fact, I'm going to do this. I go to my laser. I'm going to tell it to go home. You can't see my laser, but that just slammed into the side rail and just bounced off the back rail. No telling where it's actually at. But what I do before I start this two-hour burn, and I want to have some sense of security that I can send this back out, what I do is I come down here, and right now if you look on my cuts and layers, I have my black layer and my blue layer, and then I've got a tool path. Well, I'll come down here and grab something that I'm not using, go to layer three, draw a circle, come up here out of the way anywhere on the work bed, select that, um, I actually I just need to select that layer, I can tell it uh, the speed's fine, but I'm going to turn the power down to you know, 1%. Tell it OK. And then I'm going to come over here and turn off the output for my black layer and my blue layer. So the only output that I'm sending to the laser right now is that green layer at 1%, which is not going to do anything. And you want to look at your preview. Oh, I did send out the frame. I don't want to send out the Why is the frame still on there? Output, output, laser, laser. Oh, because the frame went on layer two. I didn't catch that. That's why you go to preview. You want to go to preview, make sure every time. So, all right, go put that back on the toolpath. I didn't catch that switching on me. All right, so now I don't need the frame to output. I don't need my black or my blue to output. So now the only thing outputting is your green. So you go to your preview. The only thing going is that little circle, and that's at 1% power. It's not going to do anything, and even if it does, it's nowhere near my material. So now I'm going to go to my laser and tell it to start. Now, my laser, you can't see, but it just went out and did that circle and went where? It went to X10, Y10. It is now at a known fixed position. So now I can go back to my tools or my, my layers uh, turn these back on, select that, delete that. Now I can use my toolpath for framing purposes. I know I'll have my material where I want it. I can send it out, and as long as I never touch my material, once it finishes this one point or two hour burn, if I need to go back and change something about the settings on that grill and send it back out, I can do that and rest comfortably knowing that it's going to be within a very tiny fraction of being in the exact position it needs to be. So, now, I've talked about it in the past. Now, you've seen how to set it up. It is in the wrench and screwdriver. Turn on your return to finish position. Set it up at whatever value you want. I use 10 and 10. And then in order for that to be more than just a return to finish, you need to send out a stupid little job, make it go do something, return to X and 10, get rid of that stupid little job, do your burn, and now you will have comfort in knowing that if you need to, you're going to send that job back out and be able to duplicate it with pretty good confidence using the X tool D1. Now, if you've got limit switches and all these other nicer machines, you're not going to need this tip. But this is Did You Know for X tool and light burn. So this has been Steve, Hobo with Wood. I really appreciate you guys hanging around and watching. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. It's it's way down, way down in there. You can see it. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you'll have reminders. Uh, I, I really appreciate all my subscribers. And also, I'm going to put a link down to my YouTube or in the comments here for a link to my Etsy store. I'm beginning to slowly build some images there. Uh, I'm going to upload this one today. Uh, this over here is a four layer, five layers counting the backboard. This will be a five layer 3D image creating a little Halloween scene with uh, you know, a tree prominent in the foreground, uh, a little graveyard with the ghost coming out, then a haunted mansion with somebody standing in the door. Happy Halloween. And then the moon in the far background and stars. This is a scalable image that you can, uh, that you'll be able to buy off of my Etsy store. 
and build this. I built it last night in a little two and a half by two and a half box. You can make it, you know, 12 by 12. It's really cool, really neat. I'll have that on my Etsy store along with some earrings. The purse that I built, uh, here it is. This is a lady's clutch. Uh, it's actually quite nice. Uh, very inex uh, not, well, it's inexpensive to make. Um, and I've got this one designed and built so it latches with magnets. It's a living hinge with plenty of storage for a cell phone, wallet, lipstick, personal products. Uh, but it's not a daily purse. This is a, a nice little clutch. I got the, uh, the plans on Etsy for that. So again, thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video. This is Steve, Hobo with Wood. I'm out.